This is a short video about what it means for a subset of a topological space to be dense in the, the space itself. And so kind of our definition here, or maybe what's our setting first, as usual, X is a set, T is a topology on it, making this a topological space. And let's say that A is just some subset of X. Then our definition of what dense is, we're gonna say that A is dense. When we say dense, we need context as to like where does A live. So A is dense in X. So anytime you're talking about dense, you gotta tell me where. A is dense in X if the closure of A, A bar, in other words, the smallest closed subset that contains A is just the whole set X itself. So to give you uh, an easy example, um, I'll use my favorite set. This isn't a definition, it's an example. All right, Mulligan. To give you an easy example, I will uh, use my favorite set. X is one, two, three. And I think I've used this topology before where I'm gonna say the topology is empty, all of X. I'm just gonna take the singleton one <clears throat> and I'm just gonna take the uh, sets one, two as well. So remember, these are the things that we're saying are open. That's what it means to be in a topology. And so from there, I can tell you about what the closed sets are. So the closed sets of X are just the complements of each of my open sets. So the complement of the empty set, uh, closed subsets of X are. Complement of the empty set would be the whole set itself. Complement of X would be the empty set. The complement of one in this set one, two, three would just be two, three. And then finally the complement of one, two in this set one, two, three would just be three. So these one, two, three, four things are the things that I'm calling closed. Uh, now, what are we gonna do? I'm going to pick out or say notice Let's notice one here. What is the closure of one? And so what am I asking you? I'm asking you to tell me what is the smallest closed set that contains one? Uh, and so in this case, well, none of these contain the element one. So the whole set itself contains one. So the closure of X, I'm sorry, the closure of one is all of X itself. That means that uh, one, the singleton one, is dense in X. So that was kind of an easy example, or in, in one, two, three, I guess I should say, with this particular topology, so it was dense in X. Let me give you another example that's maybe a little bit more relatable to some of us that are teachers and did a lot with the real line and stuff like that. So let's say that X now is all of R. Let's say that A is equal to Q. So it turns out that the rational numbers are dense in the real numbers. So then uh, Q is dense. And R, and this might be a fact that you've seen maybe in like a real analysis class, or I'm going to use some of that terminology uh, in order to talk about it, just to remind you too, the complement of the rational number, yeah, of the rational numbers, uh, is the set of irrational numbers. Uh, irrationals. Maybe I should say two. When I say the rational numbers, I'm talking about all fractions, p over q, where p and q are integers. So nothing like pi, nothing like square root of two, but seven, yeah, that's there. Okay, so then q is dense in r. And so how do I want to try to say this to you? Uh, I'll just do a little like proof by contradiction. And so let's suppose, maybe I usually start by way of contradiction, b walk, suppose that q is contained in some set C that's contained in R where this is closed. All right, so then what's it mean for C to be closed? Oh, so maybe what, also, what's my goal here? What's my goal for this little proof? My goal is to show you that no such C exists. And that would mean that the only thing that's closed that contains Q is R itself. And remember, if that's X and A is Q, then I just showed you that the closure of, I'm going to show you the closure of A is all of R itself. So that would mean that Q is dense in R. There's a lot of letters. Okay, continuing on. So let's suppose that we had some closed set uh, that contains Q. So what should we be able to do? Well, we can apply the definition of what's it mean for C to be closed. So by definition, um, C is closed. That means that the complement of C is open. So by definition of closed, we can say the complement of C, so R minus C, is open. Okie dokie. And so what does it mean to be open then? That means that if you took any dot in there, any number in there, uh, you should be able to put a ball around it. In our case, since we're one dimensional, like an interval around it. 
um, that is completely contained in this set, R minus C. And so you should be able to do that for any number in there. So for any x in the complement of C, there exists some number epsilon greater than zero. That's like our radius of our interval, uh, such that, again, the ball centered at x of radius epsilon. What's this d here? I just mean like absolute value, like how far apart are two numbers on a number line, uh, such that that interval around x should be completely contained inside of r minus c. Cool, and so how you should think about them is that this interval around x, it does not touch c at all. If it's entirely contained in the complement of c, that means it doesn't touch c at all. So I'm gonna write that down. So that means that's B, D, X, Epsilon, intersect C is empty. Uh, and then in that case though, I was supposing that the rationals were contained in C. So that tells me then that's B, D, X, Epsilon, intersect Q is empty. So what did I just build? I just built some ball around some real number that has no rational numbers is, it, is what this says. If you think about what do you know about the real line, you had that thing that was called the Archimedean property that maybe you saw in like a real analysis class. So to tell you about that, oh boy, I gotta spell his name right. This is gonna be embarrassing. I'm just gonna go for it. Archimedean, Archimedean, this is terrible. I think that's an I there. Archimedean property of the reals. Um, say given Let's say X and R, what can we always do? Uh, we should be able to find a rational number that's smaller than it. So there exists um, a number, say, N, such that, maybe just to be safe, uh, yeah, I'll say P over Q. P over Q such that's, again, P over Q is smaller than X. Cool, and so well, why is that good for me then? Okay, so uh, I've got this interval now that's centered around this point that I named X here, and we said we're gonna go X plus epsilon this right end point, and X minus epsilon this left end point. That's this ball here, interval, right? And we're saying I've created an interval that has no rational numbers at all, and the Archimedean property says that's baloney because I don't care how far apart you are there, you should always be able to fit a rational number uh, inside of this interval here. So for any rational number, or sorry, for any number, you can always find, uh, you can always find a rational that is arbitrarily close to it, is what I'm trying to get across with the Archimedean property. So that is a contradiction. So what does that mean again? Uh, since B, D, X, Epsilon must, have some rational numbers by the Archimedean property. Uh, and so what does that mean? So no such C exists, which implies R is the smallest. And in fact, it's only closed subset that contains Q. And so again, what does that mean? A lot of so's here when you're writing your proofs. Don't put so 600 times like I do. Don't follow me. So the closure of Q is equal to the reals itself, which means Q is dense in R.